Welcome back everybody to a, another fun-filled episode of Pole Barn Garage where we're back with the 1983 AMC Eagle SX4 one of 2,251 made and we have a little bit of work to do on this so uh, it has no heat need to fix that it has no headlights need to fix that uh, something going on on the front end clunkety clunk I don't know I got new motor mounts trans mount bushings for the front a lot of stuff we could throw at it and see if that fixes it and if not we'll dig in a little deeper and I want to run the valves on the thing and see why it goes clickety click 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 a tap tap uh, let's dig in and start with the headlights and get rid of these god-awful LED you know Kmart special like pretty much all the rest of the work we've done on this thing as of yet this is mostly going to involve undoing everything they've done to it which is a lot. I mean, there's wiring everywhere for what? I don't know. They're just headlights. So let's get started and pull the battery out that is properly installed. Of course, this bungee cord really doing a lot, but you know, never mind that. Let's trace the wiring back, see how bad they butchered it up. And then I think we got to pull these bezels off, and then we can get to those. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it is like negative four outside or something. I've got my heater going when I don't have the camera on, but we'll see how long I can stick this out. But at least we can get a start on it, right? So I can already tell they've used wood screws here. Yep. I approve of that. Definitely, I, I would do the same. You know, the uh, zinc finish on these adds kind of a certain charm to your vehicle. There we go. Yeah, those might be worth a respray real quick before we throw them back in. Uh, let's see. How bad had they screwed this up? Uh, yep. Oh. Um, ah. Well, that would be why that one didn't work. I'm just gonna guess. Let's see if this one is similarly, similarly attached. Oh, this had no screws in it. We could probably fix that while we're in here. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna say that's why these didn't work. Uh, just a guess. I don't think they're Bluetooth. Well, I was gonna give it a quick squirt of paint, but all my cleaning products are frozen solid due to the negative zero sub-zero temperatures. Well, let's go ahead and zip this side off. I have to put about 25 screws back into this just so it has all the screws. Isn't it terrifying when you find a car that, man, it sure seems like you've already worked on it. Please don't break. I bet this is not easy to find. Oh, this is nice, man. Yep, I gotta show you guys this. This is quality stuff here. This right here, you know, I was wondering why it was a little droopy-eyed. Oh, uh, that's why, that's why. See, instead of putting an adjuster in it, no, just uh, shoot a drywall screw into the plastic. I uh, can't say I would do any difference, so I'm okay with it. There. Uh, not quite, huh? Well, that one's plugged in, and uh, that one's not. So three out of four weren't even plugged in. That's probably why it didn't work. Just a guess, but I think that's a pretty solid guess. Like new LED headlights straight from China. Oh, well tell me how the hell that was supposed to do anything. <laughs> I don't think they had any, uh, maybe they were using this as the signal wire to turn on those relays and just turn on all four lights to make sure you blinded anybody who drove by. So it's a little concerning because I, I mean, that's the low beam, what's left of it. Man, they really did a number on this. Um, <laughs> God, I don't even know where the wiring is on this side. I guess it's still in here. Please still be in here. There's something dangling down there. No, oh, that's a marker light. Probably go ahead and pop the grill out just to make it easier. And I like to paint that too when I can. Let's go ahead and zip the grill out of her. I think I got a plan figured. See, I found the the uh, driver's side high and low beam harness is still here. So worst case scenario, we just got to tap into that, and run a couple of wires over to this side, but. There is some wiring still here, like the high beam plug is still here. I think all we gotta do is replace that low beam plug. It's not as bad as I originally thought, which is 
you know, unusual. There's no screw there. Uh -huh. It's missing 99% of the hardware, but I'm not surprised. I wonder this thing rattles so bad. <laughs> Maybe we'll end up fixing the engine dock just by putting the front end of it together. It would appear that the fog lights are essential to retaining the grill in this car. Again, definitely something I would do. This is, there's probably some karma going on here, I guess. Get it? Karma? <laughs> God, I'm a riot. There's a grill. I used to have a couple of these extra laying around. I just don't know where anything is. I've had a few eagles in the past, and I kept a bunch of parts. But they're all, they're all gone now. I'm sure you guys can relate to that. Boy, they've got these fog lights plugged into the factory fog light harness here. We ought to dig into that, because... I don't mind the LED fog light, I just I just hate, you know, the rest of it. Although I do have some more period correct fog lights that might look pretty cool on here. I had a brand new headlight connector and in stock, luckily. Probably from one of those El Cheapo wiring harnesses I've bought. And I'm just kind of taking a guess at where they go. And I know the white wire in this harness goes to the top plug, because AMC, <coughs> I believe uses a GM wiring coordination, which makes things a little bit easier. It's been a couple of days since I've been out here. Been doing this over Christmas. I haven't really done too much with it, but I fiddled a little bit in my off time. And I was just trying to take a couple days off for the first time in a year. Uh, you know, putting videos out every week takes a lot of time. What I ended up doing is I dug out all the wirings, the last thing we did, and it's all still here. I replaced one of the connectors over here and so now I think where we're at is we just need to make sure the headlight switch works and that we actually have you know headlights. Let's just see if we have headlights. I'm just going to plug in a bunch of these old random headlights I had laying around. Hopefully they're good. Plug them in. Is there a half-ass match set of them? That's kind of nice. Always put your headlights in right side up. Bothers me like crazy if the words are upside down. This one here. Oh, this one doesn't match. Dang it. Right? No. Well, we got some. We got the lows anyway, right? And we got the highs are trying to light up. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't even know where the dimmer switch is in this thing. So I don't know if the dimmer switch is supposed to be on the column or or what. I don't, I don't think there's anything on the floor. Is there? Sure doesn't look like there ever was anything down here. Maybe I'm wrong, but <laughs> I'm not seeing much of anything. It turns out the dimmer switch is on the column on this, which Normally it would scare me, but it's actually pretty easy to get to. It's just this little guy right here. It's just got a rod that comes up here. Oops, stop that. So this column is freaking wasted, and that's where a lot of our problems are coming from. But if you hold the column up, let's see, it does work. Even the indicator works on the dash. It's just, uh, matter of going to fix the column and that's going to fix a lot of our problems in and by itself. This guy's kind of dim. So when you hit the brights, these are pretty dim and that tells me it's probably a dirty ground somewhere. And I want to get these fog lights to work too because it does have the factory fog light button on the dash and it's all plugged in and stuff, but they don't work. So I'd like to dig into that and see why. I don't know if I want to keep those or go with old school stuff, but let's find out. Anytime you're diagnosing something electrical, it's kind of hard to do if you don't know what the normal operation is, but I'm assuming that pushing the light part of this rocker switch would turn the lights on. We got our plugs here, and this is all a factory harness, and it doesn't look like it's been messed with. I'm hoping we can make it work relatively easily. Let's see if we got any power going to it, and uh, nothing. So let me go flip that switch the other way and see what I get. Looks like nothing, a whole lot of nothing. A fuse box is under here somewhere. And got a dome, instrument lamps, all that works. Stop, brake lights, park lamps, but all that seems to work too. I'm guessing it's an option to have fog lights. 
So if it was an option to have fog lights, then they're probably an auxiliary harness. You know, just kind of shove your hand up into things and start pulling until something happens. And, you know, when you inevitably screw something up, just blame it on someone else. That's, that's what I do. I would love to show you guys this, but there's approximately two inches of room in here. And I, I uh, don't think that's even possible for me to do so. I mean, if that's not a factory switch, it's a pretty good looking aftermarket installation with all the wiring harness and all that stuff. It's possible that it's not a factory. All right, well, I think we figured out the wiring. It's uh, butched like everything else in here. It's definitely not original because it's all wrapped in electrical tape, although it is an AMC, but I was gonna try to salvage all the original harness and, you know, it's got wires going in and out of different things and plugs all over the place. And why? Because all it's got to do is turn a damn light on or off. So they had to make it as complicated as possible. I understand. We know that if we just put power to these, it'll work. That's all we care about. I'm going to test our switch. So right now the switch is off. And right now the switch is... is <laughs> not, not working. Always on, always off. Switch is bad. Oh. I had to push a oh, there it goes. I had to push a little bit hard on it. It looks pretty corroded and nasty. Yeah. I'm sure it's no better inside. I'm gonna replace those super Chinese million LED lights with these very dim and largely useless vintage fog lamps. Wow. But they're cool looking. That's way cooler looking. Yeah. I don't know. Which one do you think? The vintage. These? Yeah. So they're both old as hell. These have covers. Huh? Ooh. Pretty cool. Whichever set goes on this, or the other set will go on the van. So. Okay. What well, do you think? I like the orange ones. Ooh. I don't know. Orange ones may match the van. They would match the van better. These would look okay on here. I see you do those. These? Yeah, so I kind of, you know, chopped this out of the dash so I could use it. And we're just going to rewire and do it ourselves. Fog lights are currently grounded right now. Power going to the fog light right here. Right over there. Right into the harness. Right on the red wire. Right? So what we do this has a light built into it we want that light to light up only when we turn on the fog light so we're just going to twist those together to make it easier on us and then our supply power is this guy right here and this switch is still kind of funky there we go yeah this switch man I don't need know. a new switch it really does need a new switch See how it's now all of a sudden it's dim. I can barely see it. And I think it's the switch. Not getting good contact through it. Oh, well, there we go. What did I do? There. Oh, there we go. It was stuck. Oh. Now it goes all the way. There. I just had a beat on it a little bit. <laughs> Well, there we go. So our switch will work, although the light quit working on it. Anyway, I think we've decided on the hideous black plastic Peterson fog lights to replace these hideous LEDs. You know, f replacing f perfectly functional, more functional things with less functional but also hideous things. Yeah. Look what's still in here. It's a cruise control module. <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. I want all the wires to go away! Eh, maybe not, actually. Let's, let's go up into the dash. So we'll just tuck this away. And it's gone. What we're gonna do to get our power for the fog lights, so I'm just gonna grab something here. Um, you know, whatever looks tempting. Uh, something fused would be good. Well, anyway, I think we could take it off the accessory fuse, probably get away with that. Yeah. So we came with a whole bunch of crap here, actually. Brand new from 1980-something. Uh, yeah, there's an inline fuse right here. So, 
I guess we could use this. Does it come with a switch? No. Damn you, 1980s somebody. Our power wire plugged into the accessory box. And we have our inline fuse here, which will theoretically prevent the car from burning down. I mean, it won't actually do that. We can lie to ourselves and tell ourselves that it will do that. Well, we'll do that. And then we can just plug them, wire them, and splice them onto our plug for the switch right here. Good to go. We've got our factory appearing switch in here now. So that's good to go. It's all wired up. Now we just got to move out to the engine bay and uh, run a hot ground wire out there. Ain't nothing to it. He's taking off the hideous $20 Amazon specials. Pretty convenient how they put them in there. Yeah. You might be able to lay on the ground and see it. Yeah. Well, I'm on it, it's just the radiator gets in the way. Yeah. Maybe a ratchet would be better. Well, yeah. That would be better. Let's go ahead and rebuild this front bumper before we do anything crazy here. Uh, I think we should squirt it real quick because otherwise then we'd have to take them back off to paint under it. Mm -hmm. I'd say we just paint, paint everything. the whole front bumper. Yeah. Yeah. Cleans up pretty good. Get all that algae off there. This must have been the north side. <laughs> and we're just getting all fancy right here. I mean, full res restoration, actually. Yeah, restoration. I mean, we are totally... This is... Look at this. I mean, masking tape and and paint and uh -huh. stuff. I mean, wow. I think we've really jumped the shark. We're really trying to make this look nice. I think this is it for the channel. I mean, this is probably the end, you know? Yeah. Once we, now we've, we've really reached reality TV star status. This you cars know, might look actually beautiful. We do things right around here, okay? Kind of. You know, we pour millions of dollars into things that really deserve it. That tape is worth $50,000. Oh it's so cold, I don't think it'll stick. All right, freehand it is. Time to show you how to do that. We'll be freehand masking this, naturally. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't you know, look bad. Do, I'm gonna upgrade right now. Hmm. Upgrade. Ooh. Just upgraded my masking equipment. We're really in danger of jumping the shark now. Don't get that on Discovery Channel. And it's gone. There, it's brand new again. Missed the spot. Brand spanking new. Look, it's just running right off. Literally. Of it. I mean, we've had the heater on for quite yeah. a while. Do we need to put like a heater on it? We will. Like just put Is it, it right there. <laughs> huh? It might be flammable. I guess it is aluminum too. And aluminum in normal paint doesn't really get along. I don't know why, but there is a reason for that. <laughs> Prepare to install our new, old, cheesy, horrible 80s lights. And we want to make sure we get them at like kind of a pretty much a straight up and down angle, I think. I don't know, they look like floodlights to me. Like they're not beam. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have a directed beam on them. But the weird thing is, is you gotta, so like you put this in, figure out what angle you want, then you gotta take it back off and put these little covers on the bottom. I mean, I guess you don't have to, but it would look nicer. They sound very cheap. Yes, they are. All right, I'm engaging the eyeball meter. What do you think? Like that? Yep. Just like that, huh? Perfect. Okay. There, now it's locked in. Double check. What do yep. you think? Yeah. Pretty good? Yeah. Once it tightens down. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's put this one on all the way, and then we'll put the other one on. Okay. That way we can match one. You yeah. Know, that way we don't got one doing like... <laughs> we got this one on. I just want to show you guys real quick that I use heat shrink connectors when I'm splicing things that are 
open to the elements like this, those are a lifesaver. Huzzah! It's amazing! What a pain in the ass. We were trying to run it off of the accessory part of the fuse block. Apparently that wasn't going to do it because it, you'd turn them on and then it would just toop, cut all the voltage. Then come back. The voltage would come back. Which is very strange, but anyway, we got our looms ran here and I'm going to show you how to hide your wires. Very carefully here. Watch and learn. JD, watch and learn. Mm -hmm. See, you don't want red wires and stuff showing through your grill, right? Yeah. That'd look tacky. Yeah. Look at that. What wires? See them? You see them? No. There you go. See that? I definitely do not see them. They're gone. Yep. Yep, gone. Pro tips every day. Back to trying to reassemble this. I uh, found two, you know, brand new headlight adjusting screws in stock, so that saved me three bucks. But uh, I discovered something else I need to address before we can even put all this back together. Look at here. That's one of them uh, fancy ultra chinesium LED 1157 replacements. And uh, no, no thanks, I don't want that because I can't get it out. Uh, they corrode real bad and, you know, they're made out of... Uh, the bimetallic synthetic aluminum beer can and that's why it also it had the flasher system all rigged up in the car that's because an led has very little to no resistance and a incandescent bulb has resistance well this makes a flasher work this tells it that hey i'm on oh I'm hot, open up, turn it off. Oh, back on, you know? I mean, there's ways around it, but I don't care. Why? I don't need that. This isn't, you know, Fast and the Furious 77. You know, we don't need that. Oh, I gotta try to wrestle this freaking bulb out of here. Ah, uh, yep, broke into pieces. Stuck in here, here we go. Got it, got it. Oh, you, oh my God. It's just this hard goo, like they tried to use a bunch of bulb grease or something in there. Don't use that. It's a surefire way to make sure dirt and everything else sticks in there and then you know you don't have lights. Let's put a regular old E1157 in there which all I had was one amber one and one uh, clear. So uh, don't judge me it's all I got. Let's see if it works. Yep. Okay. I'm sure we don't have turn signals. I've still got a lot to figure out there. No. <laughs> we need to clean these up a little bit before we throw them back in. They got all kinds of molds and fungi on them. Let's see if this cleans up. Oh, like brand new. I'm putting at least 30% more effort into this than most cars I do on the channel. Think holy goat levels of effort. Like. I really love that car. I tried. Some of the cars I don't really like. And it becomes abundantly obvious. Here's a uh, pro tip for you, if you all out there are uh, wondering why your car might be droopy. You see, it really helps if you install the headlight hardware uh, instead of just having it, you know, flop and do nothing. <laughs> that That's how both of them were over here. And I think there's still one over here. Yeah, it's just not in. That, that that would help. We got our headlight adjusters in there, and you could tell I put it in there totally correctly with Dollar Tree Super Glue. Anyway, they're ready to rock. So now we have to adjust them doing the correct adjustment procedure, which is basically halfway point them at this wall and see if they line up and inevitably end up skylighting all the trees and the ditch on the other side. Turn on the lights. Aha. Now you kind of see the line right here. They're actually not too bad. Adjust them a little bit. You want them to be angled in and down, I think. Oh, that sounds good. oh well, that adjuster just broke. You know what? Let's put that back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, looks good for my house. I needed to run the wires through the grill opening. God damn. I have another solution. What? Notch. Notch it right there. Kind of a big deal now. Not letting it go to my head or anything. Where do you think I should put the uh, diamond encrusted hot tub at? 
Look what the butchery you did here. What is it? Just like this. Just. Why don't you just use the cutter? No. Yeah. Clearly, I'm the brains here. No. Church, I don't like the looks. No. Brand new grill. In there. Is it actually new? No. You got two holes that are not there for the uh, to put this bezel on right here and. Uh, they can't put a screw in it, and that's why they had those wood screws shot in there. So uh, what we're gonna do is, my buddy here decided to make me some molten Gorilla Glue here, which he heated up with a heat gun. And uh, I'm just gonna take this pipe cleaner, and uh, I'm gonna take this pipe cleaner and pack it full of the Gorilla Glue. We're gonna let it tack a little bit, and hopefully shoot a screw into it. And maybe, just maybe, we can temporarily install a headlight bezel. Well, uh, that didn't work. It's all goo still, but whatever. We'll shoot screws into it. And it'll be fine. At least it has these bottom two to hold it in. Yeah. If nothing else, maybe it'll super glue the top on. <laughs> At least it'll look like there's screws. Yeah. Well, you know what? It had nothing before, so well, maybe a couple days it'll harden. There it is. It's pretty tough. But now I gotta paint this. <laughs> I like the black. It looks pretty tough. He's looking good. Yeah, Look good. Paint nails. Yeah, I bought the red fingernail polish to paint the red stripe back in it. We'll see how that works. I don't know if it'll work or not, or the durability level of fingernail polish. Not totally sure. Looks so much better with regular headlights in it, though. Man, way better than those goofy LED things. And I like the covers on these. Looks nice. Nice clean look. Puppy off of here. Probably break every single stud of it. Okay, there's one that's still good, and that's all we need to put it back on. You're not going to believe this, but I got every single one of those off without breaking a single stud. This is a heavy piece of trim. You can kill somebody with this. Clean this up. That's the kind of thing that rusts up the rope. God, look at how clean that is under there. Still need to take this thing to a car wash, though. Maybe we do that in this episode. Hey, I gotta paint this. And uh, we're just gonna rebuild it brand new. It's fish eyeing really bad. Hell, you used degreaser on it. I wouldn't think that would happen. T to be fair, you didn't let it dry. What? The, it was still wet from yeah. the degreaser. It's fine. Well, whatever. Good enough. The rest of it kinda looks like crap anyway. Kamikaze. My dad's had that tag around for ever and he had it on something in the 70s i'm not sure what but seemed fitting for this let me know what you think and if you have other 1970s novelty tags laying around i would be interested in them and i have a p.o box just saying let's see if the nail polish will work no wow this stuff is how would you ever paint your nails with this stuff that's a lot better pretty tough looking front end really but with our facelift completed Let's dig under the hood and see if we can find out what's going tappity tap tap. Well, I'm going to pop the valve cover off of this thing, or try to. Looks like there's approximately 6,000 bolts that hold it down, so, you know, we might be here a while. Okay, hopefully I don't break every one of these, because that didn't feel good at all. Anyway, got 47,000 bolts to go, and I don't know if I got to remove this idler pulley or not. Really hope not, because I don't want to deal with it. And then let's check the valves and the thing, and I don't know. Hope maybe there's something broken in there. I don't know. Something obvious would be nice. Let's see if I can get this valve cover off without breaking it. That would be super cool. What do you still got? Oh, I left a bolt in it. Yeah, that'll do it every time. Oopsie. Thing's so crusty I couldn't even see it. Huh, interesting. Well, it looks like I gotta pull the eyelid fully off, which that kind of sucks. Never research anything. Just go into everything blind. Then, when you eventually figure out what you're doing, it's too late. Huzzah. Okay, now it's just gonna pop right off, right? <laughs> no. Oh, well. Looky there. Uh, yep. This has been cleaned with a wire wheel, so, yep, definitely a full rebuild. I don't claim to be an engine expert, but, uh, you know, I think 
that might be our problem. So what do we got going on here? Is it out of adjustment? Wasted cam lobe? Uh, you know, all the rest of them are nice and tight. I don't know. Can you adjust these? I don't know. I'm hoping for a bit push rod. Doesn't look like one of them jobs where you can get to the lifter without yanking the head. That kind of sucks. Are these adjustable at all? They sure don't look like it. They look like pedestals to me. Please be bent because I will just drop a brand new push rod right down in there. Oh, it's bent bigger than hell. Oh, fuck. How did this thing run? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this thing ran pretty good with that in there. Freaking 4-0, man. Indestructible. Oh, I got a push rod ordered. Should be here tomorrow at my local parts store. Let's see if this valve will move. Yeah, it moves. It's fine. I mean, even the stem doesn't even look worn or mushroomed. And in fact, it's very clean in here. I would actually say this is a, probably a pretty low mile mileage engine. I guess we can go ahead and clean up this valve cover. And, you know, she's cast aluminum job. Finn, you know, looks like Cal Custom. Polish this turret up a little bit. And, I don't know, improve the look of the engine. Make it look like she's a high performance machine, like she most certainly is. But thankfully, it looks like whoever put this on, as much stuff as they did screw up on this car, at least they didn't dupe this damn valve cover gasket on. And I'm thinking we'll paint this thing with tractor paint because that's what you do. Maybe the super clean will just dissolve grease super easy, super fast. You see it dissolving it right now? It's dissolving it super easy, super fast. You guys go tell super clean that I want that 55 gallon drum they have. Damn. It's not bad. Clean that pretty good. That's a damn near brand new four, well, 4.2 liter valve cover, actually. Cleaned up really nice. Now the real question is, do we leave it uh, raw or do we, uh, you know, paint it red or something kind of racy, you know? Yeah, just there. You know, take it there. I don't know, that does look pretty good. Uh, what do you think? I don't know, I think it needs the pop. I think it needs some red? Yeah. Some pizzazz? So this intake was driving me nuts with how oxidized and crappy looking it is. And I found this kind of soft bristle wire brush. It actually cleans it up pretty good. I think it'll make it look about a hundred times better. So that's probably worth doing while we're in here. And uh, then I'll buy some black spray paint and just kind of coat everything else and it'll be brand new, rebuilt. We figure we need some pizzazz for the old valve cover here. So uh, I got some red tractor paint here and uh, just gonna brush paint it with tractor paint. And I've actually done this before and stuff holds up to heat pretty good. But I think the red valve cover and then we sand these fins off so they're aluminum, it'd probably look pretty snazzy. We'll do that, we'll call it powder coated and say yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll drop 300 bucks getting that powder coated. <laughs> kind of rich. And I'm going to use my Dollar Tree paintbrush here. And this is all because I don't want to spend $10 on a can of engine paint. Huh. You know, I wonder, I have some of that catalyst that I used in the tractor paint. Yeah. Partner. It's probably the same stuff. Just a little bit left. This is what we do every time we're off camera, is just wander back and forth through the shop. It's kind of a thing. Probably that much. Seems pretty good to me. What do you think? Is that about right? Maybe mixture? a little more. I don't got no more. Yeah. So yeah that's that's perfect. Good. That's going to look mighty slick. Mighty slick. Make sure it falls down inside of there so the engine eats it. A smaller paintbrush would be better for this job. Unfortunately, Dollar Tree doesn't sell a smaller one than this. Is this is this what Chip Foose does? Like when they build those SEMA cars that are like super fancy and stuff? Yeah, I'm sure this is pretty close. Yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, you, you got to have the epic edit in there though. Bizarre! I like it. Well, next day it's suddenly like 65 degrees, 
and I picked up a new push rod, pushing rod, and a new valve cover gasket. Now, there is a difference between a 4.0 push rod and a 258 push rod. The 258 push rod is slightly longer. So we can compare the two. That the new push rod is definitely thinner, but it is the same length. We'll toss that in there, reset the valves, and see what happens. The only thing I'm gonna do prior to installing this is just put a little dab of assembly lube on either end of it. Shine a flashlight down in there and just ensure that you know it is on the lifter and not next to it because I've done it before guys and you don't want to do that. Everything looks all nice and hunky dory in there. Yep, I'm gonna toss our rockers on here. These are just torque to spec, there ain't nothing else to it. Let's put our rockers back on and I was sure to keep them in the same place that they came from and I am gonna kind of half-ass the uh, torquing procedure of these because I don't know it says you're supposed to do it with the valves closed and stuff, but you know, I think Pontiac is the same way and I've always just tightened them down until they're tight. I think we'll probably spin the guy over and make sure everybody's moving like it ought to. Disconnect the coil so it doesn't try to start on us. I should just be able to jump the solenoid here and watch them and just kind of, you know, make sure that that, that especially that one valve in particular is, is opening and closing. Alright, well, let's make sure we got some action going here. Wrong one. Oh, it's in gear. How about that? Sure looks like it works just fine to me. I think we're in business, fellas. Well, I just found the casting number on this head. It is 2686, which I just looked up as to be a 1987 to 1990 Jeep 4.0 head. So the block is a 96, I believe. The head is off something else. This is a cobbled together monster, but that does explain why it's clean in here. We might be having a fresh motor-ish. I mean, not anymore, but, but it was at one time fresh. I've been waiting forever because this damn thing still wasn't dry. It's like somebody put a quart of paint on it or something. I don't know. What an idiot, right? But that looks cool. I like it. Well, you can go ahead and ignore all that crap I was just saying. And you can also ignore all those times that I say that uh, I hate people that just glue valve covers on, because that's exactly what I'm about to do. Uh, there's no way I'll be able to make that gasket work, so we'll make our own. Give us a nice bead of RTV all around on here. Kind of tack up a little bit before we go squishing it on, as long as there's enough RTV in this tube for it. That's a problem. Completely thoroughly out of patience. I will no doubt pay for this later when I have to remove it yet again and now I have a giant mess on my hands rather than just pulling a gasket off. There's not going to be enough freaking RTV in here. Are you serious? Well, that's bad. I guess I'll be digging around and seeing if I have any at all. Okay, let's see if I can flop this without tearing up that RTV. I think I did. I think we made it over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that worked. <laughs> it is now adhered. I'm going to zip this sucker on here, and we're going to let it dry a little bit more. All right, and torqued, 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 torqued. Now, well, since we got to wait a little bit to dry, let's see if I can't scrape these fins off. I'm going to scrape them, and then I'll come in sand them. Scraping the paint off of this is going to be worth at least 75 horsepower. Yeah, we'll just take a little 180 on a block. Oh yeah. Just sand the pins without damaging the rest of it. I'm ready to tighten this up wrong way. There we go. Way over tight. Exactly how you want it. Let's see what it does. My hopes are low as always. It's still noisy. Go away. 
away with this. Oh, it's gone. Wow. Well, the only intelligent thing to do, since we have headlights now, is to go test drive the car at night and see if we can make it to the Mexican restaurant. <laughs> to the Mexican restaurant. So, I mean, mission accomplished, right? Yeah. Where's my keys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's start. Ah. Perfect. Not even a question. Well, let's go ahead and uh, wash it off. I haven't even done that since owning the car. <laughs> It's like it's clean. Or something. Cleaned up pretty good, actually. Uh, like, every piece of trim has, like, organic material underneath it, and it just continues to regenerate. I can't get it out. I mean, there's dirt and crap all over it. It's just, like, keeps it's a never-ending stream of crap. Mm -hmm. But uh, the car is rougher than I thought it was. You can kind of see the dents better when the car's wet. Anyway, uh, we're gonna shut that lifter up, uh, hopefully permanently. I'm not sure how goopy this goop is, you know? I mean, it is if called it's not, goop. Well, if it's not goopy enough... Oh, it's not. Oh, what? Huh? It's almost yeah. liquid. It's like Kool-Aid. What the? It is kind of like Kool-Aid. It is like Kool-Aid. It's blue. Blueberry. Uh, Drink up, blueberry Kool-Aid. <laughs> I didn't realize. I thought Rizlone was thick. I thought it was like goo. Like, you know, oil, not At water. At least like oil. <laughs> you know. All right, let's see. It, oh, wow, it's healed by its... Huh? It actually does sound better. No, no, it doesn't. Think it'll do a burnout? Maybe. Maybe. Probably should have put the transmission down at first. Okay. Yeah. I think it bent the push rod again. So we're looking with my little bore scope thing here to try to see. I know it's probably hard for you guys to tell, but I wanted to see if that same push rod bend again or something and I already kind of looked at it and it looks fine so I I think what we're looking at here is something that desperately needs a set of lifters at minimum probably a cam that's the push rod there he is that's the one that was bent it doesn't look very bent hey look at all that red paint I wonder what that's from that's weird oh let's go down shall we whoa It doesn't look bent. Mm -mm. I don't think it's that. I think that uh, we probably don't have bent push rods at least. So I think it's just got wasted cam and lifters in it. But it is a Jeep. I think it'll run for a while. So I think we just keep driving it until it gets way worse. I think what we're gonna do now is throw a transmission mount in it because it desperately needs it. Maybe throw a set of gauges in it before we go driving and see on other channels what they'll do is do that first and you know why? It's because they're smarter than I am. I think it's safe to say, just a guess, that the rear main seal didn't repair itself. Just a guess! Everything seems very well lubricated, you know, on the outside, and that's not good. No, I was really trying to not <laughs> jack the car up because I was like, no, this is going to be Quick, easy job, nothing to it, right? Are you gonna... What? 
interesting. Air impact for the win. How about we don't remove the cross member at all? And we just jack it up. Oh, oh there's no room. No. Huh? Nice. All right. Maybe if one side will come. Drop it down. Ah! Just... Oh shit, there we go. We'll just use it like that. I mean, we can't get them all out, but it's better than nothing. Oh yeah. <laughs> hmm. I think my assessment was accurate. I believe the transmission mount is bad. Um, yeah. Little duct tape, mail and wire. You know, I already tried the ratchet strap. It didn't work. I love this car. It's a good car. I mean, not really, but it will be. This it's is a, a, my dream car. You've already had two. I have not had an SX4. I've never well, had an SX4. SX4. You had two other Eagles. I had three other Eagles. Okay, three. I like how you're working on the car, so you get the cardboard, but I'm just laying here with a camera, so I get the rolly, you know. I wouldn't fit on the rolly. <laughs> eh, you are fat. Yes. Oh. It moves all the way out of the way. If you were smart, you would have just moved it entirely before you got out of there. No. Can you bolt this cross member up over there, actually, first? No. Huh? No, they're not, they're not even in the hole. Well, maybe there's more adjustment to this than I thought there was. I think everything needs to stay kind of uh, loose. Just reach across, snip this down just a little so it doesn't try to run away on us. So I'm going to tighten the trans mount down, and then I'm going to lower the transmission. Then I'm going to tighten the mount to the transmission, and then we're going to see what the hell the cross member looks like at that point. So, uh, by the way, that is Resident Moron, my best friend since kindergarten. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Not I my really choice. don't like it. Either. No, I mean it's not it's not mutual. But uh, anyway, it's done. Uh, God, it was a pain. Uh, there's a lot of cross threaded bolts. It broke a lot of stuff. Whatever. Anyway, it's in there, and I've covered it oil and disgusting. That's probably all I'm doing tonight. I am gonna try to throw a set of gauges in it. Now, I'm not really that worried about water temp, but I am somewhat concerned about oil pressure. Now, the oil pressure is easy. It's right on the side, easy to get to. The water temp, we might have a tough time getting a sending unit in there. And I'm pretty sure that's where the temp sender would go. I don't see anywhere else where you might have one. Now the oil pressure sender is right down there. I mean, it's as easy as that gets, but. Okay, odds that this just comes out. What? Well, that was kind of a waste of time because I don't have our adapters. To get to that size and the gauge kit I have is you know doesn't have anything of course we'll just put this back and we'll know when it overheats and boils over and blows up yeah it probably got too hot if I can't get this oil cinder out of here okay well let's see if it's got oil pressure we got our full custom installation that the channel's well known for in here. How is it clattering that bad and carrying 60 pounds of oil pressure and we haven't actually put any like thick goop in it? It's really weird actually. I don't know. I'm not dealing with it though. Let's run her. GD trying to figure out how to put the interior trim in. Does it uh, look like a self-tapper needs to be installed? Uh, no, I think just a screw will work. Well, I've got the engine supported with a jack on the front and I'm gonna try to change out this driver's side motor mount. Hopefully I can just unbolt it. It's still attached, but it's pretty wobbly. Looks to me like the passenger side mount is actually new-ish. Um, and that's the torque side anyway, so I'm not gonna deal with that right now, but at least change that one. Fortunately, these look fairly easy to do. Only a couple of bolts and this one big centered nut here. It's, it's off of there. and. Everything's really well supported and safe. Yeah, that's that's great. A lot of people will probably question my intelligence when you know I'm sticking my fingers underneath an entire engine block that's being supported by about an inch of a four by four. And to that I say, no one will remember your name. Besides, you got ten fingers. I mean, come on, you greedy son of a gun! You get you gonna use all ten? No. Time you're ready. Let's... No? 
Not yet, huh? There it went. Get that new one in there might be kind of a bear. Pretty floppy. It's still there, but it was it was flopping pretty hard. What I'm running into here is because it's still bolted to the diff, you can see it too tall. However, I don't think we need all that stud. If I cut a quarter inch off the top of that stud, I bet I could just slip it in there. And just comparing the two mounts side by side, you can kind of clearly see this stud is longer. The mount is actually designed a little bit differently, but I think we can safely cut a quarter inch off that stud. Anytime you're cutting off a stud or a bolt or something that you need to put a nut back on, always start your nut on there first that way you can make your cut, and when you back the nut off, it'll clean the threads. I'm just going to have this carefully positioned on my workbench and make a completely precise cut exactly where it needs to be. Ta-da! Eyeball gauge is pretty well on point today, uh, for sure. I mean, look at that. That's beautiful. Amazing. Uh, no, I just sometimes I I just thrill myself. So what I've got to do is try to shove this engine over, try to get it to fall onto that stud, and it didn't really do that. So let's try prying it over onto it. She's trying. There it went. Oh, there it went. There it went. Uh oh, my pry bar stuck. Ah, <laughs> like King Arthur, I ripped it out of there. And uh, there we go. Tighten all the bolts down, and we'll be ready to hit the road. I think I got it stuck in four-wheel drive. I just moved that lever that we tied up last time the other direction, so maybe. I want to see if it's in four. And I also want to go drive the car around and let's see if it's going to hold together, right? Because my whole goal here is not to have a race car or anything, it's to have a daily driver. And so it's got to be able to hold up to the rigors of daily driving. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, that, uh, that didn't last. Maybe that's why it was in two. Yeah, oh, all the bolts are loose on this, too. I'm going to say they've had some problems with that before, maybe. Maybe I should have looked at things before I just said, yep, let's put it in four and go, give it hell. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and flip it back into two-wheel drive. You know, and this is not how all eagles are, but it's, uh, well, it's how this one is. Well, I ordered new, uh, CV shafts, but in the meantime, I think we'll just delete this one. Oh, that's hot. Oh, shit. Um, anyway, it's out. That's not how you do that, I don't, I don't think. But I don't think I did anything that's going to make my life harder later. Mm. But now we have a new mission. Will this drive to a Chinese restaurant? That's just what the Eagle does, apparently. So we'll find out. It's about uh, 20 miles away or so. Good little run for it. See what it does. Yeah. I even put insurance on it with roadside assistance, just in case. Let's see if it'll make it about 20 miles or so. Good start. So it uh, looks like the car steering hose is... I was smelling some stuff. Looks like we're spraying out of there. That's no biggie. Totally optional. Hmm. Drive without that. I hope this alternator belt survives. That is sort of concerning. That we have no idea what is going on <laughs> with it, other than it has good oil pressure. So. Oh yeah. Hey, whatever. We did learn our lesson last time. Don't fill it up. <laughs> so, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll just, I don't know, twenty bucks, something like that. Uh, huh. Well, I put too much in it. Let's see, I did learn my lesson, I guess.
Maybe we'll learn it next time. It hasn't huh. burned very much gas, considering as much as I've driven it. How much did you put? Eight gallons? Eight, eight and a half? Yeah. It's done a lot of driving. A lot yeah. of idling around and stuff. And leaking. <laughs> <laughs> From the scrapyard to driving out of my town for the first time. Never. <laughs> That's quite a bit of fluctuation there. Uh, look at, I'm not doing that. The car's still driving straight, but the wheel's doing this. That's what you call bump steer right there. doesn't feel very good, I'm not gonna lie to you. Also, the gearing in this car is freaking worthless, man. I'm in fourth gear, and it's just lugging at like, I don't know, maybe 45. I don't know how fast we're going. But, like, I'd have to, like, to be comfortable, I need to be in third. Except for it has no exhaust, and I don't want to get arrested. So I have to be in fourth. I think it's getting worse. It's still running. Fine, it's running smooth. Man, that tick is bad. Yeah, that is really bad. Uh, and the idle. Why is it idling at like 2,000 RPM? I, don't, I thought oh, I had God. that set pretty good. Uh, oh, we definitely got some kinks to work out, but that's all right. I mean, it's just how she goes, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's third. So, power steering, gone. Pouring oil out of it. All meter belt's still there. Oh my god. Huh. That's that sizzling is oil bumping onto the exhaust. <laughs> yeah, this is good idea. Good daily driver right here. It is a little over full, and we know it doesn't like to be over full, so that might be some of it. Wow. <laughs> that right now. It's getting caught up on the fast idle, I think. Well, what's it sitting on? What is the leaking everywhere? I don't know. <laughs> it's coming from like... The bell housing? Yeah, I think. There's oil everywhere over here. No, that's power steering. So it's leaking power steering a lot. I didn't know if my half-ass valve cover might be spewing, but it doesn't really look like it's the valve cover. There's a little bit of seepage. I think it's the rear main again. Like I said, it was pretty over full after we put that Rizlone in. You mean Kool-Aid? Yeah, the blue Kool-Aid. It's still over full. Not much, but it is still over full. Hmm. So well, maybe I, that's why. I do think that is where a lot of the oil is coming from. Now, whether or not it pushed the seal out is another story. Really, the only thing that went horribly wrong is that damn idle, idle. screw. Look at that. It's Something is holding it in, or holding it out. And it's not the uh, idle screw. It's something else. I don't know. But I ain't dealing with it while it's hot. And I have to make an emergency trip to Iowa to see my friends Junkyard Diggs and Junkyard Mook and shoot a video with them. So that might be the end of this video. And if it is, make sure you check out the rest of our videos, all the playlists, all the whatnots, the Roadrunner, the 59 Ford, the van, the 76 Dodge truck, the Holy Goat. I mean, we've got everything you could ever want here, including a damn snowmobile to come soon. So, uh, check everything out, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and join the Low Buck Club if you don't want me to lose the shop, and we'll see you next time on Pull Barn Garage.